Hey, what's up everybody? This is Eric Scott, better known as Mud Pie here on Poker Bros, coming back at you with some 50 cent $1. That's right, we're up in the stakes this session. This is session number two. I played it about a week and a half ago. We buy in for $150, and our first hand played here is 10-8 suited from mid position. We open it for $3. If I can, everyone, could I please ask you to go down below and please click that big red subscribe button. It's quick. It's free. It helps my channel grow a ton. I'd love for you guys to be a part of the Eric Scott Life family and support the channel. And if you guys like these videos, I have a ton of content coming out. So if you get anything out of them, please give me a thumbs up and drop me a comment down below. I greatly appreciate it. Okay, so we got the 10-8 suited, and we flop a gut shot to the 7 and a backdoor flush draw. We got two checks in front of us. We're going to check back. And somebody puts down a bet of $8 into a $12 pot. And there's a call. Another call. So as you can see, if you've watched my last video, which was a 20 cent, 40 cent game, already the very first hand, you could see the action is much, much different as we have a $44 pot already going to the turn, which pairs the five. So we're going to check here. All we have really is the gut shot to the seven, which could be no good by now already. There's a bet for $22, a call for $22. So we're probably folding now. Now there's a bet for $113 all in. So we quickly fold our hand because there's no way that we're winning this pot. Okay, so we have trip fives versus a full house with the six five of diamonds. And right now they are debating whether they are going to run it two or three times or just once. I think the winner gets to select whether they run it once, twice, or three times. Usually I'm pretty sure it's when I'm in, in the lead is when they ask me if I want to run it. And then the other person can decline or accept. So they accepted to run it twice. 6-5 wins the first one. 6-5 is going to win the second one for a scoop with the full house. And a $292 pot on the very first hand of the video gets pushed his way. So we lost a little bit of money there. About $13.50 lost in our first hand. Now we've got pocket eights for middle position again. And we're going to flat that $2 open. Oh, another thing. This is a nine-handed game. Duh. I'm sure you guys know that. You're looking at it. Our last video was a six-handed game. Now, even though it's only three more people, it seems like it goes ten times slower. It's crazy annoying. But our first shot at 50 cent one dollar on Poker Bros, we went with nine-handed. So that's just what it is for now. So we're going to flat this three-bet, I think, Unless something happens in front of us, I'm pretty sure we're going to flat this 3-bet. Yeah, we got some money going in, so we definitely want to set mine with these 8s. If we could hit one, possibly win a really big pot, and we flop nothing. We've got the backdoor runner-runner straight and flush draws, which is very highly optimistic. Got a bet of 15.50 in front of us. Looks like we're going to float once. We're going to peel the turn. We've got a 9 here. Oh, we I'm sorry. I misspoke. We didn't even have a backdoor straight draw. So we get it in. The guy goes all in, and we snap him off. And we were wrong. He had aces. But look at that. We drill the river for a set of 8s on the river to crack that guy's aces. It was a mistake to call there. I don't know what I was thinking. Like I said, I played this a week and a half ago. I must have been thinking that this guy 
was just being hyper aggressive with like King Jack or some sort of missed draw. But anyway, you know, sometimes that's life. We hit the river, we win a big pot. So we're up $65 ish, and we have pocket kings here again from middle position. We're going to 3x open to $3. Yeah, that was crazy. We two-outed that guy with aces. So yeah, that was a mistake to call his bet on the turn like that. But I just got really sticky with those eights. I definitely didn't call because I felt I was going to get lucky and drill an eight on the river. I just didn't think the guy had anything. And boy, was I wrong. He had us crushed. All right, so we're going three ways to a flop here with kings. And it's three hearts on the board. So I'm going to put out a feeler bet here. And if anybody calls this bet, I can at least assume, assume that they have one heart and then proceed with caution if I have to. One fold and one call. So now the board pairs queens. Now I'm not really loving the hand. Until now. We get that fourth heart to come in, which is great, and it's a king, so we have top full house. I'm really hoping this guy has the ace of hearts. He bets $14. Now here is where we go crazy. I'm trying to polarize my bet, but I go way too big with $108.04. I think I could have got a crying call from a queen or a call from the ace of hearts if I went $40, $50, maybe even $60. But this is just entirely too big. And he's going to let it go. Like I said, I tried to polarize my bet there, but that was just too big. So that's mistake number two. Mistake number one was calling with the eights when we were crushed by the aces and got lucky. And I believe we got lucky on the river that hand too. But hey, I'm going to take it. You know, it, I lose that way as well. So, you know, I'll take the wins that way also. So we bought in for $150, so we're $91 up right now. We've got King-10 suited in the big blind, facing an open of $350. I'm pretty sure we're going to flat here. Yeah, we're going to flat, see a flop. And we flop nothing but a backdoor royal flush draw, backdoor king-high flush draw. That's my dog in the background, Tyrone, Labrador Retriever. He was just shaking himself off. So that was a good card for us, that diamond there. Any smallish type bet on the flop, I'm sorry, on the turn here, we're probably going to call, and we do, and we brick out. But it's an ace. The flush comes in. Maybe we can stab at this and represent that flush or that ace. That's what I'm thinking. So I make a bet of around almost two-thirds pot and try to take this pot down with nothing. And we get called, so automatically we know that's not good. The guy's got two pair, ace-queen. We didn't bet big enough. That's mistake number three. I don't even know if we could have bet big enough to get that guy to fold that hand. Probably not. Not in small state game like this. Now this 50 cent $1 does seem to play a little bigger than normal, but still, I don't think we could have gotten him to fold. So mistake number three right there. Now we've got ace-king offsuit in the small blind. We're up $50, but as I just said, I've already made a handful of mistakes. Guys, I'm not perfect. None of us are. We always misplay hands. We always can learn. We always can grow and get better. So we had an open of $3 and a call, and we three bet with ace-king. And it gets through. We take it down and win a $7 pot uncontested. But yeah, as I was saying, I do make mistakes all the time. It's what we do with those mistakes that makes us a better poker player. And I'm not afraid to put my mistakes out there on YouTube. You know, I may get comments that are, you know, maybe a little hateful, a little overcritical, but that's okay. I mean, I know it myself that these were mistakes, so I'm expecting it. 
don't go easy on me in the comments because I may learn something from you guys. All right, so we got a six of spades here and we raised to three dollars. And by the way, if any of you want to play in this club, I don't make the videos to recruit players. But if you want to play in this club, I will help you. Just go to Instagram at Eric Scott Life and follow me and message me and I will direct you to my agent. The guy that I trust my money with who is a great agent and will get you in the club and you can play. Might even end up on one of these videos. Who knows? All right. So we stabbed at that pot and we took it down with nothing. That's always good. Now we have an ace seven of clubs from under the gun. We're going to raise this standard 3x. I feel like it's always awkward silence when it folds around the table nine handed because. There's so many players and it goes so slow. I'm so used to playing six-handed. Like I'm sitting here basically just being silent, waiting for these players to act. And I feel like I'm supposed to be talking. <laughs> Bear with me, guys. I, it's been a while since I've made videos. So it's kind of like I'm new to it again. And I may jumble my words from time to time but as I make more videos and start interacting with you all I'm sure I'm gonna get better at it and be more comfortable with it so we called a re-raise with the ace seven of clubs and we flop backdoor straight draws backdoor nut flush draw so if he bets we probably will peel the turn card 18 is a hefty bet though for this hand, uh, I'm kind of on the fence about this one. And it looks like I am. Okay, so we go ahead and let that one go. I thought that I was going to peel there and I was not going to like that. So I'm glad we let that one go. That was a pretty big bet size. Had that been smaller, we would have definitely peeled a turn. But results oriented, it was a perfect fold. Actually, I wouldn't have minded a 4-bet with that hand. Okay, so this guy bets 39.50 when the 10 pairs the river. And Mr. Jack Farrer just lets it go. So maybe he was just being hyper-aggressive or he, either that or he thought that that paired 10 on the river hurt his hand. Guess we'll never know. Ace-King suited in the big blind. Seems like every time I have Ace-King suited, it's almost always clubs. Occasionally hearts, but never spades or diamonds. It's just the way it feels. It is October 30th. You might be able to hear the fireworks outside. People are right now trick-or-treating. So this channel is brand new. This is October 30th right now when I'm doing this commentary. This video will probably go up a little later tonight maybe or maybe tomorrow. Okay, what are we doing here? All right, we're three betting with the Ace King. From the big blind. Okay, I was going to say, how are we three betting? We should have already opened. Okay, but we were in the big blind. Somebody opened a three. And then we three bet to 1150. Took it down. Now we have an ace-queen offsuit from under the gun. We're going to raise it up. Standard 3x raise. Into eight players. I think I'm definitely a little more hesitant when it's nine-handed because I think people like to get in there with a whole variety of ranges and you can get put in some really tough spots. And even though this is small stakes poker, it can be very tough. 
like I said in my last video, if you saw that, micro stakes poker is tough. And there are a lot of people out there that will vouch for that. And you can get some really juicy 100 NL tables, which is what this is, 100 No Limit. Now, you can buy into this game for 200 But we're in it for 150 and we're up $50. All right, so we hit the queen on the river, and we're going for some value here. With a half pot bet. And we don't get it. But we take down a $4 pot. Getting lucky on the river. That seems to be the theme of this session. Alright. 8-9 offsuit in the small blind. Oh. Sorry about that guys. That's uh, an alarm I have set on my phone. I forgot to turn my phone off. All right, so I was checking out the play style of the person that opened there. Sometimes I'll do that if I'm deciding on whether to flat, to three bet, or to fold. I'll check out what they've been doing. Their play style basically tells me their V-pip. So we flat that open, and we flop top pair. Now, there's where I think I made a mistake. I checked. I think flatting the open and flopping top pair with that heart draw there and having top pair, I should have bet the flop. So we go with a half pot bet here on the turn and we get called. And then the fourth heart comes in. Now we have that eight high flush. We check it down on the river and we take that pot down. So I think we were good just with the nine. I should have bet that flop. So now it looks like we're down. Our stack is down to 189 and some change. So we're only up $36 now. I must have been bleeding, calling opens and folding. I don't put a lot of those hands in the videos because they're just boring. I'll get a decent hand just like this one, Jack 10 suited. I'll call an open. And then nothing happens on the flop and I fold. And so that tends to happen a lot. So I don't put those hands in the video because if I did this video, it'd be an hour long and it'd be very boring. Okay, so we flopped a gut shot. And we ended up hitting nothing at all. And we should have stabbed at this pot. I really think so. And look, he has king 10. So if we would have stabbed at that pot, we would have took it down. I really think with all the checking that we should have put a bet in at least on the Turner River. And if we did, you know, thinking results oriented, we definitely would have won the pot. But I guess back when I was playing this a week and a half ago, I didn't think that I, there was any way I was going to win that. So I just played it conservatively. But we know now if I would have stabbed at it, I would have won. So we have King Jack offsuit, which is a hand that I hate. We're in the big blind, and we get the walk, which is great, because I really hate to play King Jack. So now we have 186 on our stack, which is a profit of $36 and some change. We got 6-7 of clubs in the small blind. Look at that bad B jackpot up there. What is that? $188,000. That thing is getting huge. I'm used to seeing it at around 80, 90,000. Speaking of bad beats, if any of you guys have any good bad beat stories, please put them in the comments. I love a great bad beat story. We never forget our bad beats, do we? All right, so we flat in the open with 6-7. And we flop bottom pair here, which, looking at it right now, doesn't seem like it would be good. But we call, and we spike two pair on the turn. 
still not the greatest but there's my dog again still not the greatest but i think it's okay river makes it even worse but we're gonna go ahead and bet this i think it looks like we're turning our two pair into a bluff anyway it worked and we took the pot down I have my dog up here on the couch with me, Tyrone. He's a uh, Labrador retriever, like a hunting dog. And he'll just kind of shake off his loose fur. So that was that noise you heard in the background. He does that from time to time. All right, we got 6-7 suited again. From under the gun, we open to $3. We get one call. We got two calls, three calls, four calls. All right, so we're going five-handed to this flop, and all we have is a backdoor seven high flush draw. We have nothing. So we're going to see bet this. It's going to look strong since we opened pre-flop. We're in early position. And now we're leading into everyone. So hopefully we get this through. I honestly don't remember what happens here. Wow, look at that. Just a little bit of aggression. We got some money in the pot pre-flop. And the C-bet works and we take it down. Now obviously you can't C-bet all the time, but that one worked and we'll take it. All right, Jack-10 offsuit on the button. Now here in this situation with a hand like this, if it folds around to me, I will almost always open this just to steal blinds. And, but this time I don't. That's weird. Because normally I would have opened that just to try to take the blinds. But maybe I'm feeling right now that Jack-10 is just a good enough hand to go heads up with against the big blind. Maybe I'll bet the flop with nothing and take it down anyway. So we flop nothing. And knowing me, I probably will stab here. I don't actually know if I will or not, but I'm thinking that I probably will. He checks, so yep, it looks like we're going to stab. We're going to go with two-thirds pot. Just a little poke, you know, just enough to get it through. If they're holding nothing, they're going to give it up. You really don't get a whole lot of playback on micro stakes. Very straightforward. Now, you will get the occasional player or two at your table that will play back at you that is a very good player. But for the most part, it's pretty much ABC poker. All right, so Ace-8 offsuit. And just like I said, fold it around to me. I'm in the cutoff with an ace and I open it and take the blinds. If you do that enough in a session, it really, really helps your win rate. So now we are in the cutoff again with ace-queen offsuit. We're going to raise this up to standard 3x. Now I don't mind taking this one to the streets here. But that's not going to happen as we get them all to fold and we take the blinds down. So our stack's back up to 209.05. So we are $59.05 up. Now we have pocket sevens in middle position. And if you've seen my last video, we have a habit of getting pocket sevens quite a bit here. So we've got an open to 350. And knowing me, Unless anything else happens, I'm probably just going to flat here. So, yep, we're going to flat and we're going to set mine. Don't get too excited. I almost never hit a set and I don't hear. So, we just have sevens. We have a heart. So, we got one check. We got a bet of, I think that's 925. 825 I'm sorry and we just let it go 
king on the turn. So yeah, that probably was a good fold. We were probably beat on the flop. You know, jack or a 10 could be in anybody's range here. You never know. Somebody could have pocket fives. Or they could have had just a hard draw. But in that circumstance, I think just folding pocket sevens there on the flop is the best play. Especially with the big stack. All right, we got three players gone, and I think this is the last hand of the night. We've got 10-8 suited, and it looks like we're going to bump it up. And guys, while I still have you, if you haven't hit that subscribe button, please hit that now for me. Give me that thumbs up if you got anything out of this video. And if you want me to continue to put out poker content, I will do that for you. Let's see if we get this hand through. And we get it through, and that's going to be the last hand of the night. So I will catch you next video. Good luck on the tables.